Hey, this is uh, Michael Miracle, and I'm here to review Monochrome Mobius Rights and Wrongs Forgotten. Before we get started with the review, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to hit that notification bell to get updates on all our new videos posted. Your subscription helps our channel immensely. Now, you know, let's get to the review developed collaboratively by Aqua Plus and Design Act. Monochrome Mobius Rights and Wrongs Forgotten is a significant addition to the Uda Udawara Romano series. Released on November 17, 2022 for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 in Japan, the game made its worldwide debut on uh, PC Steam. Players can anticipate a global release for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 versions on September 5th, 2023. Um, this game commemorates the Utawara Romano series 20th anniversary, offering fans and newcomers alike an opportunity to explore its evolving universe in the realm of intricate narratives. Monochrome Mobius Rights and Wrongs Forgotten stands as a prelude to the events in Utawara Romano, Mask of Deception, leading players on a journey that unfurls in the province of Enakamui, nestled on the borders of the Yamato Empire. The protagonist, Ashtor, finds himself drawn into an enigmatic web of circumstances as he embarks on a quest to uncover the truth about his supposedly deceased father. Guided by a chance encounter with the mysterious Shunya, Oshtor sets foot in the clandestine country of Arva Shulan, a place that defies geographical conventions. The story woven within uh, Monochrome Mobius presents a double-edged blade. For ardent enthusiasts familiar with the source material, it can be a tapestry rich in depth and subtlety, bringing forth a sense of satisfaction as hidden connections are uncovered. Yet, for those uninitiated in the intricacies of the Udawara Rumono universe, um, the story might seem like a maze filled with enigmatic plot points that can only be fully grasped through extensive perusal of the in-game glossary. Um, in a realm where storytelling innovation takes center stage, Monochrome Mobius offers an intriguing mechanism to aid players' comprehension. While Final Fantasy XVI's active time lore is hailed as a genre breakthrough, um, this game dares to tread an alternative path. Players are granted unrestricted access to the expansive glossary even during pivotal cutscenes, enabling them to delve into the depths of lore, characters, items and locations at their own pace unlike the limited topics of active time lore and this approach presents a virtual encyclopedia encapsulating the essence of the game's world however this feature while commendable also underscores the narrative's complexity and reliance on prior engagement with the franchise monochrome Mobius commences as a gradual crescendo, embracing a deliberate pace to set its stage, yet this measured rhythm might challenge newcomers seeking instant gratification. While motivations crystallize over time, the overarching plot dances at the periphery until the final act. The concluding chapters surge with revelations, akin to an unforeseen tempest of lore. This climax can be overwhelming for those unaccustomed to intricate storytelling. The game's dialogue-heavy nature serves as both a strength and a, a potential hurdle. Rooted in a visual novel framework, conversations become the heartbeat of engagement, you know, intricately threading the narrative's fabric. While, while some interactions resonate deeply and on offer insights into character dynamics, the weight of the dialogues can't be ignored conversations extend to considerable lengths, occasionally lasting up to an hour. This characteristic can create a sense of immersion, but might also be a daunting commitment for players seeking more concise experiences. Monochrome Mobius employs a classic uh, turn-based combat system where battles are governed by the action ring. Displayed in the top left corner, this circular interface showcases the order of unit turns through three, uh, three concentric rings. Each character's speed stat influences their position on the rings, determining their movement 
and waiting time until their next action. The combat dynamics feature a unique layer of strategy. By consistently attacking an enemy, players can induce a state called stagger, followed by um, additional strikes that lead to a more pronounced state called collapse. An interesting tactical twist comes with the ability to move closer to the innermost ring by breaking an enemy while the broken foe moves to the outermost ring. The circular progression of units continues with the distance from the inner ring influencing the duration of the wait for each unit's turn. Monochrome Mobius enhances its combat experience with the Ascend combat skill. This skill becomes accessible during an overcharged state, which can be triggered by dealing and receiving damage or by defending. The game presents a strategic element where players maneuver to secure positions on the innermost ring for quicker turns. This is achieved by exploiting staggered opponents or activating the powerful Ascend skill. While the combat system initially appears straightforward, certain intricacies remain inadequately explained. The introduction of status ailments and lingering effects adds a layer of complexity. Unfortunately, the game fails to offer clear guidance on how to dispel or remove these effects from the action ring, leading to confusion for players. It's possible that a tutorial may have been missed. The absence of proper clarification creates a gap in understanding. In the, the field areas, creatures known as kimono await triggering battles upon contact. A tactical advantage is gained when landing attacks on the field, providing a head start in battle. Being caught from behind places you at a disadvantage. Notably, kimono of the same symbol can differ in strength. Those nearer to paths are less formidable, while those farther away boast uh, larger groups or varied enemy types. As your characters advance, a unique approach emerges. Attaining a level 6 to 9 tiers above Kimono Render's field attacks lethal bypassing battles. Uh, this strategy yields the same rewards, streamlining character progression and resource accumulation. Leveling up Grant's characters, battle points BP that allow for stat allocation, complementing conventional level up boosts. Um, however, the speed stat remains immune to this enhancement, relying solely on regular leveling and equipment. Experience points are divided amongst the team, with battle members receiving a larger share. Crucially, deceased characters do not gain XP at battle's end, underlining the importance of strategic survival. Town interactions encompass investment in equipment shops by providing necessary materials. Enhanced gear emerges from successful contributions, equipped with added effects or stats. Meanwhile, fortifying older equipment enhances their properties. Requests from bulletin boards enrich the experience, presenting tasks with varied rewards, including XP and items. Some quests even grant immediate level ups. Completion time frames vary, demanding timely execution. Monochrome Mobius intertwines practical features. Auto save triggers under specific criteria coexisting with manual save options. However, a pivotal juncture in the final act warrants attention. Once entered, departure is prohibited, sealing the fate of uncompleted quests. Visually, the game boasts a commendable standard. The cell-shaded aesthetic uh, contributes to an anime-inspired ambiance that resonates effectively. This art style seamlessly harmonizes with the game's overall atmosphere, character models shine with intricate detailing, their forms capturing attention with finesse. Uh, character portraits employ watercolors to craft an aesthetic that borders on the sublime. Environments too are, are, are praiseworthy, you know, with, uh, with towns and dungeons generally well crafted, though a final dungeon proves vexing, you know, yet a minor criticism emerges in uh, textures and terrain details warranting a touch of refinement. Some areas shine a tad too brightly, possibly benefiting from an adjustment of brightness levels. You know, the musical backdrop of Monochrome Mobius, while adequate, lacks memorability. 
the auditory ensemble doesn't firmly entwine itself within memory with compositions that evoke a sense of adequacy without reaching transcendence. Voice acting, presented exclusively in Japanese, evades critique due to linguistic constraints. A noteworthy anomaly lies in the persistence of voice lines lingering beyond the closure of dialogue boxes, creating a minor annoyance but is quite frequent. The technical aspects don't escape scrutiny, particularly concerning performance. War monochrome Mobius boss wrestles with frame rate hiccups even on the PS5 platform. Occasional moments resemble a slideshow casting a fleeting shadow on the gameplay experience. It's uncertain whether this issue is rooted in the PS5 optimization or inherent complexities. The performance quandary raises questions about the PS4 iteration's fate, sparking curiosity to contrast the two versions for disparities. Despite its aspirations, um, Monochrome Mobius appears to grapple with performance issues that underscore the gameplay journey. In the aftermath of a 42-hour journey, my experience with Monochrome Mobius can be deemed satisfactory at best. This turn-based RPG scratched the persistent itch for strategic battles, yet it refrained from charting novel territories or birthing innovative concepts. Instead, it trod a path already laid, one that failed to impress through extraordinary feats or remarkable accomplishments. Um, The game harbors a sense of adequacy in its execution, ensuring that the essential components of the traditional turn-based RPG genre are present. However, it doesn't transcend the ordinary or illuminate the landscape with groundbreaking innovations. My foray into Monochrome Mobius unveiled an experience that, while not extraordinary, managed to fulfill the foundational expectations of the genre. um, This game stands as an offering tailored uh, primarily for adherents of the series or enthusiasts of conventional turn-based RPGs a la Dragon Quest. It's a haven for those who seek the familiar embrace of traditional mechanics and time-honored gameplay dynamics. If the yearning for a turn-based RPG beckons or if the desire to delve into uh, into this series takes root, Monochrome Mobius might be a viable choice. The game's current full price might not be the ideal investment. The allure of Monochrome Mobius could be better harnessed through a subsequent sale, unlocking its potential without the burden of a premium $60 tag. And that's my review for Monochrome Mobius. What did you guys think? Are you going to buy it? Do you think you'll get into this massive franchise or will you skip it all together? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. So remember, you're in my arena. So like, comment, and subscribe.